Well, happy families tend to start with happy moms. So today we're focusing on ways to help moms live a little happier. Studio 5 contributor and Back to Basics founder Connie Sokol joins me. Now, Connie, it's no no joke here. Mothering is a serious <laughs> business. <laughs> it's serious. Yes. So how do yes. we, as moms and women, not overthink yes. mothering and find ways to enjoy it? You know, I think the big trick is just remembering that we wanted this, right? We wanted to be a mom because some days you're just like looking at the sink of dishes and the laundry and the kids are screaming, they're bickering, and you're like, ah. But remembering this is what we wanted. We wanted this whole package and you don't get to have the one without the other. So if we're gonna make this this joyful experience, we better be looking for that joy and experiencing it as we go along. And you mentioned the one without the other, meaning the ups and the downs. The so and how the downs. do we navigate through that sea of ups and downs? That's right. Well, I think one of the first things that I, I actually love some of the responses that I got. I put it on my Facebook page on Eight Basics, and I had these women that responded of their things that worked. And so one of the first things that I kind of gathered was it's go-to rituals, and those are everyday practices or things that we can count on that can help us to either be super soothed or feel rejuvenated by it. and so whatever that looks like so for me like the the ones that are peaceful rituals that are soothing is like putting on those aromatic oils or like okay it's kind of a dumb one but I have this little skin cleanser brush thing at night and it just like massages my face and I go oh and so you know the kids can be like pinging on the door and I'm just like yeah two minutes two minutes and so it's like a soothing thing and it could be that it's more of a creation thing I think we women are so wired for creation and when we have children we've already created this wonderful thing and so we we end up kind of putting aside this other I don't know the the more personal creation things but actually it can become such a boon to us because it helps us be able to break out of of kind of the daily you know mundanity kind of a thing but anyway using those rituals that you can count on that will give you that fill that you can okay as soon as I get to nine o'clock that's my time and that tr plays into creating hobbies or taking part in interests to kind of yeah. help you through. Like I was saying, those personal purposes, or even it could be something simple, like you bake or you even declutter a space, or maybe you love to quilt or whatever. It's taking even just a few minutes, and we're so get closure as women that we just have to learn to be content with, I'm gonna do 15 minutes, or I'm just gonna do 20 minutes on this, and just be able to feel the fill, not I'm going to get this completed, because then we just ruin the whole point of that creation fill. And it could be something that you're just, it's something that's a regular thing. Like I was saying, baking, I love to do baking. It's not something that I say is necessarily creative, but it's just, it is a fill, especially if I'm taking it to someone else or whatever. So find those things that give you that outlet because then you're not so dependent on your children as a creation having to have some outcome. Like now they're done, now mm -hmm. they're finished, now we've hit a milestone. You can be doing that with your paint board or something else so that you can just let them develop as they go and you can have more control over this. Do you think part of the problem with mothers not being able to f um, step into their hobbies and interests is because they get too involved in their kids' lives and kind of living through their kids and they lose themselves a little bit. I think that's possible. I think it's really highly likely because that becomes such a focus in our lives that we can tend to get really magnified and the poor kids, they feel this hover mother thing. And so it's finding our balance too. But I think that's where the happiness comes in is when we can celebrate their and rejoice in those little things that they've experienced or their personal you know milestones or joys and it's it's independent of I'm a good mother or I'm not because I think that's a big killer of happiness is if I'm a good mom and I, I got all the dishes done and the kids look all beautifully dressed and they've got all straight A's then I'm a good mom and so I think it kills it when we kind of put those restrictions instead we can pull it back to this is great this is wonderful and I have some control over this and so you talk about working in self-esteem builders yes. what are those well some of those things could be just those basics that we forget especially after we've had children and especially like we were just talking about the sleep deprived haze where the spiritual habits that we do that keep us grounded and clear and those physical habits that keep us energized and, and vibrant that keep us with the health and those emotional habits that help us to set healthy boundaries those are all those self-esteem builders so that no matter what our children are doing or choosing we are still on this family ship and we are the rudder is true and so whatever tidal waves come doesn't matter because we have got these anchor points of these self esteem builders, these habits that we put in place that we can rely on and keep us grounded. Now it's often vocalized that moms um, start to get 
weighed down a little bit. They feel like they're being judged by other moms and there's sure. this standard that you have to hit. How do you keep upbeat in those situations and keep your mind thinking um, solely on your family and, and not worrying about that? Yeah, well, I eat a lot of chocolate and that works. But <laughs> we you know, all love the chocolate. You know what I find is that one of the favorite things that is a go-to for me when I'm feeling judged is I own it. I just own it. Like yesterday, I went to the salon to get my hair done. You know, it's a nice salon. And my son decides before we walk out the door, he wants to wear two different shoes. Because, you know, one of the preschool kids did it. I'm like, what? The shoes are matching and they're right there. And for a millisecond, I'm like, that's going to look so goofy. And I'm not going to look like I dressed him right, right? It was yes. this little me. And it, I call it the bitty Betty. It's just in my brain. It just goes, oh, but so-and-so. And I thought, great, super, wear him. <laughs> so we wore him. Who cares? And so it's owning it. I think smile, laugh, own it. If you're like, you know, someone comes up and says, oh, your son hit that wrong note in the band concert. You say, isn't it great? It's his favorite <laughs> note. <laughs> Who knew? You know? Yes. Just own it and move on and leave them with their mouth hanging. Don't worry about it, so just move on. And I think that applies to us as moms, too, as we've got spit up on our shirts yeah. and maybe a Cheerios little brushing you know, poo yeah. on our hands from changing the Exactly. It. It's all good. <laughs> it's part of the motherhood package. Okay, now you say celebrate the little moments. How do we create yes. those moments? Yes, you know what? It's first and foremost looking for the moments because they're already there. And that's, that's the beauty of motherhood. And sometimes I think we get in phases of motherhood where we are nose down and we are like, get in the car! And it's like, everybody Everybody has to go and we have to drop off or do or whatever but we miss the moments yesterday we were doing errands and I took my toddler we had 15 minutes I'm like sure let's go to the park so we went to the park and it was blue sky and puffy clouds and a little breeze and he was giggling with friends he just made going up and down the slide and I just no phone no electronic device just and it was beautiful. It's those moments. We've got to look for them. We've got to find them. And those are those moments. Now, you have um, a book, title of your book, yes. Life is Too Short. It sums up this topic, and you're yes. offering a special deal for Mother's yes. Day. Yes, ebook is $2.99, and the print book is $9.99. It's the collection of the best essays that I did for Deseret News, and it's actually, I think, the funniest book that I've written. So if you want to lighten up about motherhood and just laugh about stuff and say, I'm good, this is the book to get for yourself or for your mother. And you're such a fun spirit. I bet it's going to be a great read. <laughs> right in time Thank for Mose. Thank it's you, Connie.